It's 2025 and we got this video before GTA 6 and I'm also disappointed. Everyone loves GTA because you can do stuff you can't do in a real world like buy a house or talk to a woman. Today only and only for educational purposes we will take a look at a publicly available repo where some guys as they state reverse engineered parts of the GTA Y City source code. This is of course not the original Y City source code from Rockstar okay it is someone's personal project and the guys say in the readme this was done by replacing single functions of the game with their reverse counterparts using a dll so i guess it is some decompiled dll replacement magic now first i will take a brief look at the bigger picture of the code base and then i will go a level deeper into the trivial parts of the code like weapons vehicles buildings and so on for anyone wondering this repo does not contain the game data so even if you build the project Project, you will still need to buy the original game to run it okay so let's take a look at this pandora's box the folders at the top include configuration stuff for the build you can see we have a vs code folder with some json files containing build configuration stuff i guess yeah like include paths compiler configs and so on you of course don't need to do it this way if you want to build something on your own which i highly doubt since you're watching some guy with a low GDP country accent talking about C++. Anyways, we have a CMake folder. It does not contain any CMake list files, but .CMake files, which are CMake toolchain files. With these, you can configure your build. This contains uh, languages and some other stuff. Then comes the most interesting part, the sources. Then we have the vendor folder, it contains third-party libraries. These are included as Git submodules. If you don't know what Git submodules are, you can basically include other Git repos into your repo without copy-pasting stuff. Having submodules comes with other advantages also when it comes to maintaining, updating, versioning, and so on. In this case, you can recognize a submodule by this S. Yeah, it also says submodule. Okay. Then another interesting part is they included coding style rules. So every developer should follow these rules while developing. This seems trivial stuff that does not impact the final product, but it impacts the overall readability of the code, which then makes it easier to maintain, which then makes it easier to refactor if something's not working properly okay so generally speaking when analyzing huge code bases you can of course use tools as source trail or code compass but in my opinion if you can't live without the tool then it's a skill issue and nowadays it seems like people are so in love with bloating their work setup you don't need every plugin config whatever it reminds me of the guys that have every possible tool in their garage and everything is in full order but they never done anything with it okay now let's take a look at the code and what you immediately see is the abstraction of real world objects like buildings vehicles weapons and then the physics part like collision control and so on also, similar to other code bases that are analyzed, for example, the Doom source code, they have a folder called math, which contains all the math functions. This is a common and good approach of how to do it. Now, what I expect is to see a lot of object-oriented programming in here. Now, there are a lot of opinions of object-oriented programming, but I think in the grand scheme of things, it has its place, okay? So... If you need to start working on a large code base and if there is no documentation, I recommend starting with modules that sound less complex. So for example, renderer sounds a lot more complex than let's say entities. So let's start with entities. It includes dummy, entity and physical. If you go into dummy, it includes entity. Entity includes model info and placeable. And then if you go into physical, it also includes entity, timer, and lists. So the not so nice part is that there are not many comments, descriptions on what is entity, what is physical, what is dummy. But that's because this is not the original source code. I mean, I don't know, maybe also the original developers also don't write any comments. Let's go back to dummy. It defines the class C dummy, which inherits from C entity. This capital C stands probably for class. And if you now take a look at C entity, we will see it inherits from placeable. Okay, now let's jump to placeable. 
It does not inherit anything, but it has this class matrix as a protected member. So matrix is probably something that has some coordinate stuff in there and it's used to store positions of objects, I guess, and to manipulate these. Now let's stop here for a second to take a look. The first interesting thing that I see here is this protected member matrix. And the second thing is this operator new overload with the comment disable allocation. So in C++ you have different access levels for member variables, so you can define them as public, private or protected. And that determines then who can access the variable. And then we have this much more interesting operator overload. I saw a few times people doing this and I have to admit I'm not a big fan of it. So as the syntax highlight also suggests, I guess. Yeah, so basically what they did, they, they declared the operator new, they made this overload, but without defining it. And what then happens if someone tries to use the operator new with placeable, it will trigger a linker error. So effectively enforcing this restriction. Okay, then we see a lot of gather and setter functions. And at the bottom we see two overloaded functions is within area. This checks if something is probably within some defined area. Okay, let's go back to entity. By looking at these enums, one could assume that probably buildings, vehicles, pedestrians and so on all inherit from the entity class. And entity, as we saw, inherits from placeable, which means that all the gather and setter functions and is within area functions will be inherited. Now, if we take a closer look at entity, we will see that it has a lot of member variables. The member variables are grouped for some reason into flags um, A, B, C, D, E, F. And the small letter B in front of each variable probably stands for boolean. And now you might ask, but why they didn't just use a boolean instead of this unsigned integer? And the reason is, for example, in embedded development, we want to have a guaranteed fixed length of 32 bits. Okay, the other thing with this... Um, grouping into flags a b c d now i have never seen anybody grouping variables like this in something like a b c d i assume since this is a decompiled code base they just group them to make the reverse engineering easier especially if multiple people were working on this at the same time now let's take a look at the functions of entity and as you can see it has a lot of functions uh, let's take a look at this one is visible okay so the function just takes a look if the object is visible or not and then returns a true or false okay now let's take a look at physical okay so physical describes an entity but with additional members that describe like physical properties like velocity speed mass this small m stands for member i guess and then you also have some booleans like is heavy, is affected by gravity, and so on. And then if you scroll furthermore, okay, it has a lot of functions. Like, a lot of functions. Okay, good. So this was a folder with a small amount of files. And also the complexity wasn't too high, except for maybe this physical class. Now, this was just a brief look at the entity source files. We have a rough idea what it does, but as with any legacy code, if you don't need to touch it, don't touch it. Under any circumstances, don't start randomly refactoring stuff because you will break something somewhere, okay? Now let's continue with... Uh, let's continue with... Uh, buildings. This seems to be a very simple part of the code. We have building, which inherits from entity, obviously, and then some operator overloads for new and delete. And one interesting thing in Grand Theft Auto Y City is you can buy properties at some point. So this get is a tradable, which always returns false, is for that purpose. We have building, ah, okay, and we also have tradable, which then is a child class from the class building. Building has a virtual get is a tradable function. And then tradable overrides this function to always return true. So if something is a tradable, then get is a tradable returns true. You don't see the keyword override in here, which in my opinion is not the best practice to leave it out, but it will work nonetheless. 
Okay, now let's go to weapons. Okay, let's take a look what we have here. Bullet info, explosion, shot info, weapon, weapon info, weapon type. Let's open weapon. Include weapon type. Okay, the definition of the class weapon. Then some public members like weapon type, weapon state. The small e is probably for enum. Yeah, it's an enum. Let's see what weapon type is. Okay, so all the weapons are defined as enums. And this file also includes some other enums which describe the weapon state, weapon fire, and... Okay, some other weapon properties. Let's go back to weapon. Let's take a look at some of the functions in here. So we have fire, fire melee. So this part of the code probably implements all the firing weapons logic. Okay, and if we go in here, as you can see, the code starts getting more and more complex. But the main idea is we have weapons, we can carry weapons, we can fire weapons, and when you fire a weapon, something happens. And when you don't have enough ammo anymore, then you hit a reload, and yeah, this implements the whole logic of having and shooting weapons. Now, the interesting part of the weapon source code is that we don't have the inheritance anymore, which I assumed. So it's not like we have a class weapon, and then for each weapon or separate weapon class, you have our own child class, like, I don't know, sniper class. It's more like we have a weapon and then an enumeration of weapons. And if we go through all the other files now, we will see that none of these classes inherits weapon but they all describe different parts of this firing weapon interaction or scenario, like explosion, projectile info, shot info, and so on. Let's take a look at shot info. Ah, okay, finally some comments. Used for flamethrower, I don't know why its name is C shot info, has no relation with any visual, just calculates the area fire effects. So I assume if it's used only for flamethrower, but has a generic name like C shot info, then probably the developers wanted to reuse this part of the code for other weapons. But at the end it was used only for flamethrower, because it's probably a very unique weapon I guess. Okay. Now let's go to vehicles. Okay, let's close this. Don't say close. Automobile, bike, boat. I'm looking for something generic like vehicle. It starts with uh, enums, a lot of enums. Enums, bomb type, doors, panels, lights. Okay, okay, class vehicle. It inherits from physical for obvious reasons, I would say. So I assume all the specialized vehicles like automobile, bike, boat, and so on inherit from the vehicle class. And as I said before, this uh, physical class, it adds a layer of this physical properties attributes to the entity, okay? so. Vehicle inherits physical, physical inherits entity, and of course, depending on the access levels, if something's private, public, protected, this class vehicle can use all of the members and functions. And by the same token, all the other vehicles, like, let's take a look at automobile. Yeah, it inherits vehicle, that means it can use all the things that vehicle inherits. Let's go back to vehicle, vehicle. Vehicle has member variables like color, extras, whatever extras is, passengers, drivers, and uh, yeah, also autopilot. But I haven't seen autopilot in here. Let's take a look where it is. Okay, it's in control. That's interesting. Okay, so autopilot contains all these like route information, next route node, direction, lanes, cruise speed, current lane, and so on. This is a more complex part of the code. Let's take a look at the functions of autopilot. Okay. Modify speed, that's self-explanatory, and remove one path 
node, which I think removes just a node from the autopilot path nodes. Now let's go back to the vehicles and let's start with automobile. Okay, and it inherits vehicle as we said, and then it includes also damage manager, which probably keeps track of the damage inflicted to the vehicle, I guess. Engine status, doors, okay, that's it. Missing burst, light status. Okay. And then you have the damage manager class which then has all the setters and gathers for the damage that's been dealt to doors or panels or whatever. So this is basic object-oriented programming stuff. And if you have done any C++ object-oriented programming course, then you, then you will recognize all of these programming concepts. Okay, now let's take a look at the pedestrians, vehicles, blah, blah, blah. Pets. Okay. Ped stands for pedestrian. And now again, it starts with a lot of enums. Defining stuff. And then comes the pedestrian class somewhere, I guess. Okay, here we go. It inherits from physical. And then again, same as before with the vehicles. We have like pedestrian. And then we have car pedestrian, civilian pedestrian. And they all inherit from the base pedestrian class so inheritance again okay now let's take a look at something different mm, let's say collision so collision describes i guess all the collision physics of different geometrics like for spheres triangles lines and so on and as you can see the code gets more and more complex the more you get into stuff like physics rendering collisions and so on if you take a look at the basic things like buildings and entities it's pretty trivial if you compare it to for example collision okay so we barely scratched the surface of the code base and Analyzing and understanding how, let's say, collision or camera works would take a lot more time. But keep in mind, in a real life scenario, you would never or very rarely need to understand everything to start contributing to the project. If anyone hired you, obviously. Many times I've been working on legacy code and almost 100% of the time it's never documented enough. People just don't give a shit about commenting the code so someone can understand it in like two years. So when I start analyzing some code base, if it starts getting too complicated, a small diagram can really go a long way just to help me start connecting the dots. What this also shows is that a lot of games are building upon the previous game. In this case, Y City has been built upon GTA 3. So it's not like every time you're starting something from scratch. Of course, the graphics get better, but parts of the core logic are staying the same. And of course, the physics and everything is getting optimized and so on. But as you can see in the games, most of the features are staying the same. You can drive a car, you can use weapons. And now in the next version, the car driving gets improved more realistic or whatever but the core thing is staying the same so that's it for today if you liked the video like and subscribe to support the channel and see you in the next one Tariq the next